Hello and welcome. So in this video I wanted to give you a little bit of insight into how we teach maths in reception. What we're really trying to establish in our children is early number sense but from the outside looking in it can kind of seem a little basic to say the least especially when it kind of just looks like we're playing. It's not uncommon to hear parents remark but my child could already count to 10 when they were two and in fact they're already counting to 100. So why are you spending so long on numbers 1 to 10? Well, I'll try and show you if I can. The work that a child does on their early number sense is critical if they're going to gain the deep understanding of number that's going to allow them to work with more complex numbers as they get older. Children start their reception year at wildly varying abilities. Many, of course, can already count to 10 and beyond, they can recite sequentially the order of numbers, or rote counting, as it's known at this stage. But what does this really mean? Think of it this way. In a similar way, they are able to recite, or more accru accurately sing, the alphabet. But do they really know, for example, what LMNOP actually is? Do they know that it's five separate letters and sounds, and, and not some strange green, blue, spotty dragon called LMNOP? In a similar way, children have had very few experiences to associate numbers with quantity by the time they reach school. For example, they know that they are four, but for what? They know that their shoe size is three, but hang on, I've got two feet. They may have jumped aboard the number six bus, but where are the other five buses? Well, you might well ask. So, we try and expose the children to lots and lots of opportunities to handle, sort, compare and count real objects. Balls, bears, bricks, blocks and lots, lots more. And we explore what all of these numbers really mean. The handling and counting of physical objects is crucial in the understanding of the value of these numbers. Through play and games, we support the children in their handling of the different quantities 1 to 10. And when we begin to explore the larger numbers, like 7, 8, 9 and 10, for example, the children perhaps need two hands or can't even manage these objects in their hands. They're really feeling those quantities change as they handle the different amounts. And here comes the technical bit. It's in reception that we start to explore what we know as the counting principles. And I've filmed a little explanation Children in reception need lots and lots of practice to help them understand and really embed the fundamental counting principles. And we usually do this through their play and through the activities that we've set out for them. The first two counting principles kind of go hand in hand. The one to one principle refers to the need to count each object in a group once and only once. This is often something that young children need a lot of practice doing. One, two, three, four, five, six. They have a tendency to skim and flurry over numbers. They skim, they count too quickly and miss out an object. One, two, three, four. Or they flurry, they count an object more than once. And this happens more often when they have not yet learned how to count systematically. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The stable order principle refers to the number names being said in their correct order and knowing that the order of those numbers will not change. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and not one, three, four, seven, six, five. Loads of counting songs and rhymes really help with this. Now the order of relevance principle kind of goes kind of goes hand in hand with this one too and this refers to the understanding that the order in which the objects in a group are counted is not important so we can count them one two three four five six we've still got six we just counted them in a different order the number is still the same and this is largely down to the understanding of the cardinal principle now this is an understanding that the final number said when counting a group tells the counter how many objects are in the group. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six is the number in that group. 
And conservation of number tells us that this number does not change even if we move the number of objects around. For example, ask a child which group has more, they will more often than not say this number here, even though they have exactly the same number in each group. They have six. This is why they need loads and loads of practice counting, handling and comparing objects and quantities to deepen and embed this understanding of number. And then finally, you have the abstraction principle that anything can be counted, even things that can't be touched and moved, such as jumps, hops or claps. OK, so there's a lot to think about there. Next up is the deep understanding of the patterns and relationships of numbers within 10. And now here's where I'll get quite serious. It is crucial to develop a deep and robust understanding of the composition of these numbers. Our whole number system is designed around the number 10. It's no accident we've got 10 fingers. They're very useful for counting. And now children might be able to count beyond 10 at the moment, but they need help to understand the meaning of those numbers especially those ridiculous teen numbers which don't follow any kind of pattern. The English language really does children no favours at all here. At least 14, 16, 17, 18 and 19 have the right numbers in the name, but 11, 12, 13, 15, well, they've just randomly decided to branch off into a whole new number lexicon all of their own. When we start to explore place value, it becomes a little more clear to them. So that first number represents one ten, and that second number represents three ones. But before we start going down that road, we want the children to really start to see the pattern in number. And here's where we start subitizing. In other words, we encourage the children to start seeing these number patterns, seeing these quantities perceptually, instantly recognising those number patterns without counting. And this is where we start showing them arrangements of number and playing lots of quick recognition games. The number three, incidentally, is a very natural number for children to sabotage because they've been staring up at your faces for so long. They can see that group of three, the two eyes and the mouth. That is one of the first things that children and babies actually begin to count. Then we move on to larger numbers and we try and explore all of the relationships between those dots. We encourage children to be able to recognise those numbers very, very quickly and encourage them to make early calculations to start to group them together and experience the relationships between those numbers. So I've got a little exercise for you. I'm going to give you a few seconds just to look at these dots coming up and I want you to see if you can tell me how many you see. I didn't give you very long, did I? I'm guessing that not many of you were able to tell me how many you saw there. But let's have a look at this one. It's much easier, isn't it? It's the same number of dots, but just arranged in a different way. Five and four. And five and four, we all know, makes nine. So what you have done there is to conceptually sabotage those numbers. You have spotted the pattern in five and the pattern in four, and using your number sense, you have calculated that there are nine dots. And it's here that we start to introduce the children to a more standardised way of representing number. We show the children how these numbers relate to the benchmarks of 5 and 10. First, we encourage the children to relate to arrange quantities on what we call a 5 frame. And it's here that they start to see the patterns that will help them with the more complex calculations. For example, here we have four full spaces and one empty space. So four and one is the same as five. The same here, using counters. Three yellow and two red makes five. Or five counters take away two red counters leaves three yellow. Then we introduce 10 frames. We start to use these 10 frames as a resource in our play and in our activities. So here, for example, are two lots of five at the top. Two lots of five make 10. When we've got a full frame, a full 10 frame, that's 10. And on the bottom, we've got eight empty spaces and two cones. So eight and two makes 10. They're really starting to become more agile and their knowledge of these number patterns within 10 are just becoming so much more secure. And then when it comes to looking at these more slightly complex calculations and abstract numbers later on, 
we would hope here that our children would look at this and go, hmm, nine and seven, right, so nine is really close to ten. Let's have a look at that on the tens frame. Nine is really close to ten, so if I just borrow one from the other side and pop it into the other side, it makes a full ten frame. All of a sudden I have ten, and I know that the top row on the right hand side is five, so five and one makes six. I've got 16. It just makes it so much more friendly and easy to work with. Again, when they move on to much more complex calculations later in the school, say 299 plus 357, they know that 299 is really close to 300. I'm just going to go over, borrow one from the other side, complete that tens frame in their head, and then all of a sudden that calculation becomes so much easier. They've even got those number bonds, 3 and 3 make 6. Um, again, so moving on to decimal points, they can use exactly the same principle here. So there's a really quick journey through the magical world of reception maths and early number sense. It does take us time to get there, but it is so important to keep practicing, 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 experiencing those numbers in relation to quantity, counting, sorting, comparing, and seeing those relationships again and again and again. And if they spend the time on getting this right now, it really will make their lives so much easier as they progress through the school. Thanks for listening.